so my name is Sonja Eib Karlsson. I work for the United Nations University Institute for Environment and Human Security in Bonn, Germany, based in Bangladesh now with a project on livelihood resilience, uh, where we have seven sites all over the countries together with the ICAD and Munich Foundation. So I both acted as a facilitator where I helped the groups how to use the, the tool and go through the two cases that they were given. And I also gave uh, one tool that we've been working with in Bangladesh, an example of a participatory learning tool that we've been using in the communities. So all the groups, they were given uh, two fake reality cases that they were supposed to go through based on a tool that was explained in the beginning of the session. So it was a very interactive session where the groups worked together and uh, were faced with these uh, cases and then uh, tried to uh, score it based on uh, a couple of indexes. Uh, so in the end they will be able to define the cases if it's a simple case, it's a complicated case, a complex case or even cows. So uh, one of the tools that people have come up to me after and also that I think uh, some took people back to, to the reality a little bit uh, was a tool that I explained on, uh, it's called participatory project evaluation. So uh, it focuses, it's a participatory learning tool where uh, you work very close with the community. So it starts with uh, project recall where you sit down with the communities, you make a list of all the project interventions that you have in a site. Then you move on to project evaluation, which is not focused on evaluating one project, but rather all the interventions in the site. So you ask questions like, is it a successful project? Why? Why not? Successful to whom? Uh, does it include vulnerable groups, for example? And then after that, you do a similar evaluation with some organizations to better understand how to work with the community. And finally, uh, there's a need assessment to make sure that you don't forget any of the needs uh, communicated from the communities. So I think that the reason why people liked that was because we're moving on a very global um, scale where we talk about what policy implications, for example, or what we can do on a high level. And that kind of brought people back down to local scale where uh, you need to consult the communities to be able to understand what's going on. Uh, I can give an example from one of the sites that we have in Bangladesh. So uh, there is a site which is struggling with cyclones. Uh, and on paper, there's an early warning system that seems to be working. So the system is in place, the training has been done, and the tools are there. But when we went down and visited the site during a cyclone warning, you find out that the flags hasn't been hosted or, or there is no early warning. People don't know that there's a cyclone coming. And then you have different explanations to, to why. It can be questions like people don't know where the tools are, or uh, they don't know who's responsible, or the person who's responsible, he doesn't want to be responsible because he doesn't get paid. Or even to make it more complex, um, it might be that the signal reaches people, but they still decide not to evacuate to the cyclone shelters for different reasons. So it can be a question of trust, or it can be a question of uh, gender, for example, that women are afraid of getting raped or hurt on the way to the shelters, or they don't find it appropriate to be uh, in a cyclone shelter with mixed gender. I think... Um, that it was interactive. I think people feel like they learn more uh, when they get to, they're faced with reality and they kind of brought back to how they work normally and what they can do different. They learn from each other, they all work on different scales and levels and uh, they might uh, yeah, get perspectives that they don't get in other situations. So I know that uh, a lot of people came up to me after and also before, we were very excited before the session and after they came up and said, oh, this is one of the best sessions, like I learned a lot, it was really good. So I think that's one thing that is very interactive and learning. And I think secondly, that people were faced that sometimes very, very simple, like to, like I said, to have a people-centered approach. And sometimes you forget the people, so you move up on a high scale. And I mean, we're here on community-based adaptations. You have to involve and consult the communities to be able to understand what people appreciate, what they need, what they don't need, what they dislike, etc. So I think that that's two things that people like the most.